All right. I always say that. I guess that's my thing. Maybe I'll just make an intro for my videos that is just a big, colorful, all right. It'll come in and you just see this big thing saying, all right. And then I'll do a voiceover of me saying, all right. And then it'll cut to me and I'll be like, all right. <laughs> Anyhow. Good morning. You probably can't see me, huh? Can you see me now? How's it going this morning? It is Tuesday. December 2nd, still the week of my birth, oh. my birthday is still Friday, it hasn't changed, um, I'm just getting going this morning, it's like quarter after six, uh, just leaving the yard, heading out to my pickup, which is probably about a half hour away, depending on traffic, uh, I'm trying to get there by seven, Cold. Yeah. It's 22 degrees out right now. Save it. I don't care if you live somewhere where it's colder than that. I don't care. It's still cold. Doesn't mean this isn't cold. Did I mention? It is cold. Cold. So this sometimes happens. I got to uh, where I'm picking up and checked in and they told me that this load is actually shipping out of their other location so I've got to drive now over to their other location. Not that big of a deal in this case because their other location is only about five miles away and it's on the way I would be driving past it if I loaded there to go to where it's going anyways. So. It's not out of my way at all. But, uh, something that that happens from time to time. All right, I did it on purpose that time. Um, so get a little loose. Let me take it. There you go. So I just left uh, getting loaded. Um, so when I was on my way to the first place, I passed this empty flatbed sitting on the side of the road. Uh, just a couple miles away and then I got there they told me I needed to go to the other place so when I was leaving that same empty flatbed pulled in there so then I got checked in and went to uh, the other place pulled around back where they were gonna load me and then not long after they started loading me that same flatbed pulled in there so he kind of had the same same start to his morning I guess that I did as far as getting sent to the wrong place first uh, so anyways he was an older fella and as soon as he got there, he came over to me and um, was just like, hey, uh, I've been, basically I've been pulling reefers for like 30 years, but I've never pulled a flatbed. This is my first flatbed load. So basically it was like asking me, how do you tie these things down? So obviously I know you throw straps over it, but like, what's the right way to do it or whatever. So, um... About that time they finished loading me and I moved out of the way, like just backed up out of the way so he could turn around because you have to make a U-turn and then they load you right there. So I backed up to tie down in the back and then he looped around in front of me, centered up. You're not allowed to be near them when they're loading. You either need to go somewhere else or stay in the passenger seat of your truck. You can't even sit in the driver's seat. So, uh, so he came over to me while I was tying down to ask some questions, get some advice. Um, and so, you know, me being the, the nice fellow that I am, I wanted to help him out as much as I could. So, um, I like showed him um, the, the requirements, I guess, of how to tie down a load like mine anyways. His was going to be a bit difficult. And then was kind of, you know, answering questions, letting him out. I don't know what he does. I can assume he doesn't know anything because he's never hauled a flatbed, he said. Um, so anyways, the guys loading me, or loading him now, I guess, at this point, they came over and basically told him he needs to leave me alone so I can tie down and get out of there. Uh, got a lot of trouble. 
wants to come through here, you guys can't be, you know, exchanging Christmas cards or whatever. Which I thought was kind of rude, but I also kind of understand. I spent seven years working in a similar environment before I became a driver, so, you know, I can kind of understand. Um, so the guy was telling him, you know, sorry, I was just asking for a bit of advice. You know, I, this is my first flatbed load. So they kind of kicked him away back over to his truck. And so then one of the guys came over to me and was like, sorry if he was bothering you. Um, I couldn't get him out of my office earlier, so I figured he was just bugging. So then I got the impression that he really didn't care that we were talking. He just thought that the guy was bothering me. Something like that. So whatever. Anyways, they finished loading him. They go back inside where it's warm, I guess. So I, uh, I uh, finished throwing, finished tying down my load basically, and then I went over to just help him. Because um, I was kind of, I kept looking as I was working on my load, and he seemed not completely lost, but halfway lost. Anyway. So, um, really, that's kind of the whole point of my story. Well, I mean, once I got done, I went over and then I helped him. He had basically gotten kind of nowhere in tying his load down, so I went over there and helped him tie it down and answered a bunch of questions. And, um, I don't know, it made me happy to be able to, you know, help somebody out. Um, it didn't make me happy the way the guys were kind of rude in the beginning about us exchanging Christmas cards or whatever. That was kind of lame. But after that, you know, the, you know, being able to help somebody out that you know, really needed the help. Um, he was, you may not understand unless you're a flatbedder, um, but his trailer, um, the trailer had tandems that you couldn't adjust. Apparently he asked, when they always ask you how much weight you can haul, this place does, um, and other similar places do as well. They asked him how much weight he can haul, and he said like 58,000 pounds. Crap, no. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't hold anywhere near that. Uh, wish the guy knew that, so he, he didn't load uh, 58,000 pounds. But, um, and then his trailer had fixed winches, where all of our trailers, at least all of my pulled, they have sliding winches so I can put them anywhere. So I can throw straps wherever I want, and I just move a winch to where the straps at. His are all fixed, and they're every four feet on one side, and then they're every four feet on the other side in the middle of the four feet. So you've basically got a winch every two feet and it just alternates back and forth as you go back. Well, since he'd never pulled a flatbed, he, does, he doesn't know that, right? I don't, I wouldn't expect him to. Um, so he's, as part of what I was saying while I was tying down my load, he was walking back and forth and back and forth and trying to figure out where is there a winch? Okay, there's a winch here. And then he'd throw a strap and then he'd, you know, again, go back and forth and back and forth to figure out where the next one is. And, um, and then after a little bit, he climbed up, took his straps and climbed up on top of the load and was looking, you know, look on this side, see there's a winch, and then he'd lower the hook down on the other side. It's just not efficient. It would have got the job done, but it would have taken forever. And so once I saw that, I didn't really even finish tying down. I had my straps ready to be tightened. I just hadn't tightened anything and had all my uh, B-boards up. So I went over there and was just like, hey, you know, come down here for a minute. So I showed him the right way to roll up his straps. All of his straps are garbage, by the way. He's a company driver, and they just looks like they just gave him somebody's old garbage straps or something to get him going. I wouldn't have used a single. Well, there was one, maybe, that I would have used. I told him, you need, to, you need to throw all of these straps away and tell the owner of your company to get you some real straps because you're going to get called into the first scale that actually looks at your straps when you drive through. Um, so anyways... Um, showed him the right way to, you know, even just throw your straps, roll your straps up, all that. And then told him, you know, look, you've got a winch here and a winch here. Um, right in the middle of that, there's a winch on the other side. So you don't have to go back and forth and look. You know there's one right in the center on, of these two winches. So um, don't throw a strap where there's a winch. Throw a strap in between the two winches to the other side and you'll hit a winch. Uh, so... Basically, I kind of went over there, pulled all of his straps back that he had thrown over, because even with what he was doing to find where they were, they were all in the wrong places. They weren't lined up with winches, all that stuff. 
pulled all of the straps off, rolled them back up, and was just like, look, this is what you need to do, and just kind of zipped down the truck, throwing straps, was like, you need one here, one here, you know, kind of threw all the straps, um, showed them how to put a twist in them. All of you flat will know about that, told them why you do it. Uh, I'm all done with my delivery uh, there in Clackamas. I had to wait quite a while. Uh, there was a truck that had just got in there unloading when I got there, and then there was one in line in front of me. So I had to sit there a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Um, texted dispatch that I was empty, and she said to come back to the yard. So that means one of two things, or maybe one of three things. It could mean a few things, I suppose. Hopefully, it means there's a load and go to Eugene in the morning, um, so I can get back on my normal run and do it the flip-flop way that I was talking about yesterday, where I pick up in the morning and deliver in the afternoon and miss both rushes. One option. Another option, um, there's a load for me, but I need a step deck or something, a different type of trailer, so I have to go back to the yard and switch trailers. I hope that's not it, because I want to move tarps, hate moving tarps to different trailers. Uh, third option, there's no loads, so go park it and wait for something to come up. Um, I hope that's not it either. Really, I, I, I hope it's only <laughs> one option, which is that I've got to load and go uh, for my Eugene run uh, to pick up in the morning. So, at this point, I'm just heading back to the yard. One of the things I love about living where I do in the Northwest, um, the scenery. You know, it's cold today. I think it's it's up around 30 now, so it's warming up. But um, it really is the most beautiful place. I've I've lived other places for short periods of time here and there. I, lived in San Diego for a little bit, and it's nice down there, and the beaches down there are amazing, and, you know, it's pretty nice to have perfect weather every day, surrounded by palm trees and sandy beaches, you know, that's nice, but, um, you get away from the beaches, it's not so nice, um, and I've been in Chicago, and I didn't personally think there was a whole lot pretty good about that area, um, and I've traveled western half of our country, so I've seen a lot of the scenery, but there's just so much different scenery around here, um, and you know, just driving the freeways, just like today, which is what made me think of it. I'm heading north on I-205 um, in Portland, heading back towards the yard in Vancouver, and sure, it's a cold day, but it's mostly blue sky with some white clouds here and there, um, and I can't see it right now because of some trees, but in front of me is just Mount St. Helens. Big, beautiful, snow-covered Mount St. Helens. Just off uh, to the east of me is Mount Hood. I can't see that right now because there's a big hill of grass right there. But a lot of the places all over here, if you're heading east on I-84 or Highway 14 in Vancouver or just around town roads, whatever, you've got big, beautiful Mount Hood is, you know, right in front of you. And you know, we've got, I don't know, I love going camping and stuff up at the base of like Mount St. Helens and, you know, all kinds of green and hiking trails and waterfalls and, you know, just all kinds of stuff. And then you just go, go west an hour and a half and you've got the beach. Yes, it's, it doesn't have palm trees and it's generally not 80 degrees at the beach. It's, you know, most of the year going to the beach, you're still, you know, you go out on the beach and you're wearing a hoodie and, you know, just, it'll be comfortable in town. And there's Mount St. Helens, just huge. I've tried to, on some of my filming out the windshield, tried to get some of the mountains and they just don't show up on the camera for whatever reason. But, um, anyways, you go to the beach and it'll be, you know, nice 75 degrees or something in town. And then you go out on the beach and the wind's blowing so hard, it's like, 55, the wind chill, you know, just, uh, there are some times throughout the year, usually it's not even in the 70s at the beach, usually a nice day at the beach here is 60, uh, but, you know, that's 
it's like an hour and a half west. We go to the beach like all the time. I know a lot of places in the country, you know, there's a lot of people who have never seen the ocean, never been to the beach. So, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have grown up here where it's an hour and a half away. We go there all the time. I'll go there for the day and just drive to the beach, hang out and drive home. We do that quite a bit, actually. Um, and, you know, go like an hour north and we're in the mountains, we're in the woods. There's nothing around. We're camping, hiking, all that. And you go hour and a half east and it's more like deserty. It's dry, tumbleweed, you know, almost every time I take a trip east, even if it's only a couple hours east, when I get back, there's like tumbleweed stuck in the back of, uh, under my fifth wheel or, you know, it's, um, going north and south is pretty much the same as here, um, until you get down to, you know, California, then it starts changing So, but up and down I-5, you know, it's trees, grass and trees, it's been green, but, uh, I don't know. We've got like a little bit of everything right around here. Um, you know, we've got Mount Hood is, you know, known for its skiing and snowboarding and whatnot. And that's, you know, an hour, an hour or so away. Um, really almost anything. There's tons of reservoirs for like wakeboarding and stuff in the summer. Um, I don't know. I can't imagine living anywhere else that's that's not like this i mean i can i can imagine not living in vancouver i, I would never live in portland i don't think <laughs> I, I won't say never but um and vancouver is you know a semi-large city i would like to live on the outskirts but it would still probably be in this general vicinity because there's just so much variety of, of scenery and things to do like I said, you've got a little bit of everything. Within like an hour, hour and a half, you've got almost everything. I guess there was a fourth option. <laughs> uh, so I got got my load and uh, heading back to Portland to get loaded uh, with more roofing, which is what I hauled this morning, but I'm picking up from a different company this time. And it delivers tomorrow in Bend, Oregon, which I really like that drive. Um, it's a very scenic, nice drive. You go up over Mount Hood, um, down into Central Oregon, basically. Um, I haven't, I haven't done that drive in well since I drove here before, so six or seven years, but. Uh, I did it quite a bit back then, and whenever I did it, it was from the same supplier to the same place. Um, but, I'm a little concerned because of the weather going up over Hood. Um, although it's dry today, um, there's only, I think, a slight chance of rain tomorrow, so shouldn't be too bad going up over hood. Um, but one of the things I remember about going to this place, um, or really anywhere in Bend, is there's never freight coming back out of there. So I'm sure I'll deliver this and then deadhead back from Bend. Uh, but that's okay. And really, hmm, too bad I don't have another one of those mounts. Probably be a nice, um, depending on the weather, a nice trip to get a lot of footage out the windshield and make another trucker's view video. I haven't been making too many of those because I kind of drive in the same places all the time. So you've already, you know, you've already seen out the windshield on a nice sunny day from Eugene back to here. So, you know, I'm not going to film that every day and make another video of the same scenery. So, but I haven't been to Bend yet um, since I've been back driving for these guys. So. So that'll probably be a good one to get a, uh, make a trucker's view video. Hola! I'm all loaded up. Heading for the yard, then heading for home. Um, it's only 2 o'clock. It'll be the earliest day I've had in a while. Um, jinx. 
you guys probably see me sometimes like looking down or messing with my steering wheel. I've got controls for various things on the steering wheel and turning my jake brakes on and off is on the steering wheel. Uh, usually when I when I'm editing and I see myself looking down that's what I'm doing. Turning my jakes on and off. I'm back at the yard. Finished for the day. Just doing my logbook. Um, and then it'll be a wrap. So that also means that that's the end of the video for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and give her a thumbs up. Give her! That was for Trucker Josh. Um, and maybe watch another one. Watch yesterday's, if you haven't seen it yet. If you've seen that one, then check out the one from the day before, or check out one of the Trucker's View videos. That's just scenery and music. How can you go wrong? You don't have to listen to some boring truck driver ramble on about stuff. Um, if you watch a couple others and you like those too, then go ahead and hit subscribe. Then you'll just have to watch more of me after that, I guess. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure I'll be recording again tomorrow. So, uh, like I said, hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button, um, or just watch some videos. That makes me happy, like I said. <laughs> and uh, I'll talk at you tomorrow.